So I just finished watching a lecture on YouTube uh, from this dude right here, uh, Dr. Greg Sadler. He is a philosophy professor at Marist College in New York. And um, this particular lecture was on Plato's Credo. Um, now, I'm not really going to try and explain it because uh, Dr. Sadler does a very good job in this lecture and I encourage everyone to go and watch it um, and of course to actually read the credo um, so you can you know kind of participate as much as you can with a video online. So what I wanted to do though was respond to a question that uh, Dr. Sadler asked his students was that, you know, in response to Credo's um, plea that Socrates escape from jail, um, Socrates goes into this kind of dialogue with himself uh, where he gives voice to basically the laws of Athens. Like, you know, these are the laws and these are what the laws say. And um, basically, what would the laws say to Socrates if he were to say that he was going to escape? So, Dr. Sadler asks, were the laws making a good argument against Socrates escaping? And at first, um, I was like, no, no, they're not making a good argument. And here's why. Um, uh, one of the things it says in here, for having brought you into the world and nurtured and educated you and given you and every other citizen a share and every good which we had to give, we further proclaim to any Athenian by the liberty which we allow him that if he does not like us, um, you know, he can leave. Uh, but I wanted to focus on that and something before it. Um, I think it was before it. Let me see here. Oh, here we go. Since you were brought into, go away. Since you were brought into the world and nurtured and educated by us, can you deny in the first place that you are our child and slave as your fathers were before you? And if this is true, you are not on equal terms with us, nor can you think that you have a right to do to us what we are doing to you. Um, and then it goes on. Because we think right to destroy you, do you think that you have a right to destroy us in return and your country? Um, and my, my gut reaction to, to that was, well, um, uh, you know, that you are, you are a child and a slave to the state is what I, you know, my first reaction was bullshit. I mean, do, see, because I went and read this again, I'm, I'm, I'm changing my mind. So articulating what I f at first thought is getting kind of hard. So, It's just, it's just this idea of that, the idea that we owe something to, that we owe something to, you know, the state, to the government, um, is something I always have a problem with. You know, when it's something that you have no choice in, 
And then we, oh, you know, I was not given a choice to be somewhere or to be given something. Um, and therefore, I owe you for that, even though I did not ask for it. Um, I am certainly great, you know, for in, in many cases, I am grateful for it. Um, but do I necessarily owe you for it? I don't know. I, I've always had a problem with this. Um, Dr. Sadler does, does, you know, ask the question, do we owe, um, you know, the government or whatever, something, you know, they provide things for us. Um, do we then therefore owe them for it? Like, for example, you know, we have firemen and policemen and the military. Um, you know, these are the things the government provides for us. Even though, in in essence, we are kind of provide we are providing ourselves that because we pay taxes to pay for it. I could be wrong in that line of thinking, but. Sorry, I'm smoking while I'm doing this. Um, so, what am I trying to say? Well, I don't know if we can say that is, you know, that is the, if it was, because it's not provided free of charge, you know? We do pay for it. We pay taxes. Um, it's just, I mean, going back to the idea of like, another thing that, you know, that Dr. Sadler expresses is that, um, you know, expression that a lot of parents sometimes use is that, you know, we brought you into this world, we can destroy you, therefore you owe us something for bringing you into this world. Well, like, I didn't choose to be born, you know? So, that doesn't automatically mean that... You know, in my mind, and this has gotten me into trouble throughout my childhood and then later in life too, is that that doesn't automatically mean I should obey you. You know? Um, So getting back to this, you know, because it, it goes on later, you know, it's, it, you know, if we think we have the idea in America and in other places too of, of civil disobedience, if we think something is unjust, you know, if a law is unjust, then we should not have to follow it. And this is not, as Dr. Sadler points out, what Socrates is saying. Um, that we have an obligation to obey it, to obey the laws even if they are unjust. Um, and I think basically that's it. Is that the idea that you know since you have done all you know we have we have provided all this for you therefore you must do everything that we say is bullshit. Um, and then later on it goes it goes on to say that um, what I was starting with in the first place um, you know we have provided we we give you liberty which I think is you know like bullshit to begin with this you know the government doesn't provide us liberty we have liberty because we are human beings 
you know, universal human rights. We have the right to be free. It's not given to us. Freedom isn't given to us. It is, it is a universal right given to us by nature or, you know, whatever you want to do with that. But it's not, it is not something that should be provided to us um, by people in power. So, um, so it says, you know, that, um, by the liberty which we allow him that if he does not like us when he has become of age and has seen the ways of the city and made our uh, acquaintance, he may go where he pleases and take his goods with him. And then it goes on, any, you know, anyone who does not like us and the city and who wants to emigrate to a colony or to any other city, he may go where he likes retaining his property. Essentially stating, if you don't like it, leave. Um, and that's, oh my God. And that's just been, you know, I, I, I don't know how long that idea really has been in America, but you know, after, after we dealt with the, the grief and the anger and all that of nine eleven, after that, and people started to, to, um, criticize, you know, the poli policies um, of, you know, George W. Bush, you know, people got pissed off, you know, and, you know, people were, were crying out and saying, this is wrong, this is unjust, and, you know, and then there was this huge uproar, well, if you don't, if you don't like it, leave. And just this mentality of, no, it's, um, You know, you're, you're unpatriotic if you criticize your government. And I just think that's totally backwards. Shouldn't the sign that you love your country be the desire to make it the best country that it can be? Which means... If there's something wrong going on, you take measures to fix it. Not just say, well, fuck this shit, I'm getting out of here. You know. Um, because some people can cannot say, fuck this shit, and leave. It's hard. That's hard to do. Um, you know, emigrating to another country is not very easy um so and most people just just can't do that my cigarette went out huh um but we shouldn't have to leave you know We should, we should be able to make the, you know, to make our lives the best that they can be where we are. Um, and that means if there's an unjust law, we should be able to take measures to correct it. Um, so again, the civil disobedience of, you know, as it was pointed out in the lecture of, Martin Luther King and Dr. Sadler said, you know, Thoreau and who, who else brought up, you know, not in this country, but Gandhi, you know, did civil disobedience to some extent. Um, I had the thought of Rosa Parks. Um, 
you know, just the whole civil rights movement wouldn't have happened if, as Dr. Sadler pointed out, um, you know, Martin Luther King and others like him followed Socrates, took, you know, took Socrates' advice or, or you know, did what Socrates said should be done. Um, it just wouldn't have happened, you know. So, I guess I'm going back to my original thought was that no, the laws are not making a good argument. And, um, you know, there's just this other thing, you know, because, you know, because Socrates didn't leave, you know, if you experienced us and you know how we work and you still stay, then it is an implied contract that he will do as we command him. Well, yeah, I'm not... <clears throat> you know, we're not saying that, you know, we're going to follow the laws, just the laws that, you know, directly benefit us. If we don't like it, then we're not going to do it. You know, I mean, like, most people would say taxes are a bad thing, therefore I'm not going to pay. Well, but if you don't do that, you get thrown in jail. Um, I happen to think taxes are a very good idea, but that's a different discussion. Um, They do, I mean, he does, he, you know, he does throw in there that instead of doing what, you know, escaping, you know, what Socrates didn't do at his trial, um, you know, it says you, you could have, you can co try and convince us that it's wrong. Um, but by escaping, you know, you, you are, you know, basically doing an eye for an eye sort of thing. We wronged you, so you were going to wrong us. And you don't have the right to do that. Either obey or convince us that we're wrong. Um... And what you propose to do is neither of those things. Um, I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, that, yeah, let's, you know, convince, you know, that's one of the things I think we should do is try and convince them that they're wrong. Um, But I think what the, what what Socrates is saying is that you know convince convince them that they're wrong while still obeying, and I really don't see that as working. Really, it's a nice thought, you know, but you know going back to the civil rights movement, just trying to, you know, to stand there and convince them that they're wrong really wasn't going to work. Really. Um, there had to be that civil disobedience. You know, there had to be that standing up and not only saying that it's wrong, but demonstrating how it's wrong. Just demonstrating the complete absurdity you know, of things like Jim Crow laws. <clears throat> um, and just how fundamentally evil that is. It, you know, because it really was. You know, the whole separate but equal thing. Just, yeah. Yeah, just didn't work. So...
you know, it says it stays here and you had your children here. So this further proves that you agree with us and that, you know, it says you might in the course of the trial, if you had liked, have fixed the penalty of banishment and you could have left then. They say, you know, you could have said instead of killing me, you could have left, but no. You wanted to die. You said you preferred, you know, like it says after that, you preferred death to exile. And, um, You know, and then it goes on to say, um, you know, if you do this and let your friends do this, then, you know, not only will you be in exile and have, a, you know, a rotten reputation wherever you go, but your friends will also, you know, you harm yourself and you're going to harm your friends. Um. So basically, you know, it boils down to the just thing in Socrates' mind, the good thing to do is to do what the law has commanded, and in this case, to die. Um, so I guess I was going to say, because I, you know, I read it again, you know, I read about three times now, and at first I was like, no. Nah, this is just complete bullshit. And then I was like, well, I can kind of see what he's going at. But now as I go through it again, I'm like, you know what? No. <laughs> this, no. Um, especially with the idea of um god damn I wish I was a more a little more articulate about this where am I going back to here oh by the way this whole thing that what I'm reading from is the complete works of Plato you can see up there at the top um, dollar ninety nine Amazon download. I totally recommend you do it. Totally. Basic okay. Basically, this idea of that because we have because the state has you know provided this for you because the government provides all this for you. Um. You know, as it says, you know, we raised you, we educated you, and you, by remaining here, have agreed to follow the laws. Um, um, therefore, you should follow the laws, even the ones you think that are unjust. Um, it's just, is is again bullshit um i'm sure there's a much better way of putting it but that's just how i put it um because because yeah because in socrates mind that's the just thing to do but rather than the just thing being fighting against injustice And in my mind, that is the just thing to do. Um, to fight for justice, to fight for human rights, to, to correct wrongs that you see. Um, 
especially you know especially when it comes to governmental policy against this or that um you know to have the courage to stand up and say this is wrong you know and to follow that with action through civil disobedience and um so yeah bad argument not yeah just not good um I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, the, the Socratic method as a whole, as far as, you know, a method of discussion, of discussing anything, um, you know, but especially in discussing um, morality and values and, and um, things like that, I think, and, you know, and as a method of teaching and things like that is, is a wonderful thing to have um but that doesn't always mean but when you go back and you look at socrates and you know the views that he had doesn't mean he was right you know but that doesn't mean he doesn't have any value you know because like i said he provided us the socratic method you know, Plato did. Um, or Socrates. I mean, it depends on who you talk to, whether Socrates actually existed or not. But, um, though there is another philosopher who talked about Socrates, I think. Anyway, I just can't remember his name. Anyway, that's my take as, as disjointed as it is, I haven't done this in a long time um, as far as providing any sort of philosophical argument for or against or, or whatever, or discussion of something. Um, I used to do this a lot back in college. Um, but um, that was six years ago, and I'm trying to get back into it again without the uh, benefit of a classroom, which is fine because there are people like Dr. Sadler out there who puts their lectures online and I think that is an awesome, awesome thing. So anyway, um, go to YouTube, watch Dr. Sadler's lectures. Um, I guarantee that it will be very enlightening and, and um, educational and it's you know and just incredibly helpful if you want to you know read and study and discuss philosophy um, which i think is a great thing um, and i do want to at some point get into why philosophy studying philosophy and reading philosophy um, is a good thing for you know everyone to do so thanks for listening